Good evening, folks. You're welcome to another edition of Just Banter. If you're just joining us, we'll be having a very brilliant and interesting conversation with two cerebral men, astute politicians, both of them, Barisa Kaloma Dari Mustafa to my immediate left, and Kunle Lawal, who is the executive director of the Electoral College. Before we went on a short break, we were talking about unity, disunity, issues that we have in Nigeria. Do we keep talking about issues or do we start addressing those issues? Now, I do believe that both men are very, very capable of doing something about the status quo that we have found ourselves in Nigeria, the issues of corruption, the issues of poor education, and the issues of abject poverty. These issues are not rocket science. But why do we keep on getting it wrong? Why do we keep doing the same things over and over and over again? Is it the constitution? Or is it a case of we lack competence when it comes to governance? Now, I'll start again with you, Kundi You set up the Electoral College, or you're one of the initial founders of the Electoral College. Something must have occurred to you before you decided to go or take that route of setting up the Electoral College. You have vast knowledge. You've been to most places in Nigeria. When you set up the likes of the Electoral College, how do you think the Electoral College could make an impact in Northern Nigeria, for instance, where you have the issue of poor education or poor educational infrastructure? Um, I would not like to say uh, Northern Nigeria has poor education. What I think it has is poor application of education, which is a whole different matter. Okay. So while setting up the Electoral College, a few things were key. And let's remember that when you're looking at such a society as Nigeria, you must be kind of holistic. Now we'll come back to the Northern Nigeria point. So you, are, you have to be holistic. There are key things that are a problem across the nation. And you know, like you said, one of the key things you mentioned while talking just now is that unity in Nigeria is a problem. And I, while running for office, at the time I have sent a thought that if we decided to focus on state of residence instead of state of origin, we might be able to dilute, not in this generation, but along the line in 10, 20 years, might be able to dilute what already exists. Now, coming back to Northern Nigeria, the education given Northern Nigeria, or the educational system generally in Nigeria, has been a, a how do I put it, spoon from the federal. Some things are not core to a particular community and how it thinks. Okay. So let me explain. Growing up on this, in Zaria, one of the first things you learn is the historical background of Bayajida, Katsina, and you understand the rich history of the town of Sazon. But this does not come from school. This actually comes from, you know, normal um, tale oral, tales, oral, history. Yes, oral history. Now, do you know where we have a problem? We've totally alienated that oral history and that education from our own educational system, which also affects our understanding of governance and policies because we do not even yet understand the history. It's so simple that if you do not know where you come from, you cannot chart where you are exactly. We don't even have history in schools anymore. Yes, we don't. And that's another flaw. But looking at everything, these things affect governance. Because how would I know that one day, so a, a long time ago, a governor of a particular state, I'm called state, when he was asked about the mineral resources of the state, said it was Fanta and Coke, which you would find as a joke now, of course, it's really a joke. But no, but I do believe he was just cracking a joke. Really, no, he at was that point. Not, he was, he was really? Yeah. No, no, no. Actually, <laughs> he. <laughs> uh, well, let me let me put this. He's a father to me, and uh, I have had that's Sabo Bakinzu. Exactly, I've had a few interactions with him, even as a child, and I have grown to respect his acumen and his knowledge and understanding of political and social reality to a more significant extent than even others that were lauded more for their own sophistication more than him because it was very clear that he understood very clearly who his audience was. I'll give you a simple example. He had a practice when he was in Senate from 79 to 83 to come to Kano every three months 
and go to a place called Indonesia Mochi with the locals and with the reporter and media people sitting down and for him to give them an account of the actions that he's taking and the fight and the struggles that he is undertaking on their behalf from Lagos. Which is missing right now. Which is missing right now. And if you listen to him in his own native language, you can see that he understood very clearly what his responsibilities as a federal legislator was at that particular time. And remember again, he also understood exactly how to communicate with his people and try to build consensus on which is, what governance, which is what governance and political activities ought, ought to be about. In fact, uh, the record shows he was touted as the politician in Nigeria, in the Second Republic, that made the most effective use of the radio as a means of political communication in the country. That is not somebody who is a part in any way. He understood the media. Not only no, the media, understood. he understood what his own role was, even in society. It was not a question of having uh, the certificate to back it up or the sophistication because of the Western system. He didn't have that. This was someone who was constantly reading through the laws of Nigeria and the constitution and asking questions to those who knew. So if it, if the lack of a certificate on his own part uh, no, 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 no. Uh, no, no, I understand. But Nigeria generally is not yeah. based. I, I've never believed that governance is based on education.